Hi, uh, this is my uh, third lecture uh, on dummy variables. Uh, the variables uh, used in uh, regression analysis are uh, generally uh, uh, qualitative, but occasionally we need to, uh, it is necessary to uh, use uh, uh, qualitative uh, variables. And uh, the dummy variables are uh, used uh, to incorporate the uh, qualitative information uh, in regression analysis. Let me uh, give uh, an example of, uh, uh, of the use of dummy variable. Uh, suppose uh, you have uh, two sets of data. Well, I, I forgot to say that you know uh, uh, this uh, uh, the example of uh, qualitative informations uh, or qualitative variable are like uh, employment status or uh, or, or or sex, uh, whether male or female, or uh, the origin from where the data are taken, whether it is city A or city B or uh, city C, uh, and. Uh, uh, and if there is a significant difference in, in response level between uh, two sets of data, uh, it is uh, not advisable to use a simple linear regression model uh, uh, considering all the data uh, together. So, here is an example, suppose uh, you have two sets of data, this is uh, say for male and this is for female and the data are on two variables say the response uh, variable y and the regressor variable x. Okay, so, this could be like you know uh, expenditure, per, uh, expenditure per month and this is the in income uh, per month and you have two sets of data. So, it is not advisable to, uh, to fit a model like y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x for the for, uh, for all the data together, because uh, if there is a, a significant difference in, in the uh, response uh, between uh, the male data and the female data, uh, this, is, this is not recommended. So, what we need to do is that we need to uh, incorporate the uh, qualitative information that uh, one set of data is for male and the other set of data is for female. And the model which is recommended here using one dummy variable is y equal to x naught beta naught plus beta 1 x plus z 1 alpha naught plus alpha 1 x plus epsilon. So, of course, you know uh, here we are using two dummy variable including uh, x naught and their value x naught and z 1 is 1 0 for the first set A and 1 1 for the second set B. Or oh, I said, uh, I mean, for male and for the female. Okay, so the separate models models for male and female are given by 
setting z equal to 0 and z equal to 1 respectively. So, the model we recommend is that uh, y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x for male and uh, beta naught plus alpha naught plus beta 1 plus alpha 1 into x for female. Okay. So, if you know that there, uh, you know if the data are given in, in, in two sets, uh, you uh, fit this model which is equivalent to uh, y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x for male and, uh, and y equal to beta naught pl plus alpha naught plus beta 1 plus alpha 1 into x for female. So, you fit this model and then by testing the hypothesis like say h naught equal to say alpha 1 equal to 0. So, if you test the hypothesis that whether alpha 1 is equal to 0 or not, uh, that is basically you are testing the uh, appropriateness that whether uh, two uh, parallel straight line can be fitted for two sets of data. Similarly, you test the hypothesis H naught which is equal to say alpha naught equal to alpha 1 equal to 0. So, this hypothesis is testing this hypothesis uh, is uh, equivalent to you are testing the uh, appropriateness of the fact that whether the same model can be fitted for both sets of data or not. Okay. And the other one is that you test uh, this hypothesis H naught which is say alpha naught equal to 0. So, this one testing this hypothesis means you are testing whether uh, uh, two uh, straight line with the same intercept can be fitted for uh, two sets of data. Now, if you see that all of them are rejected, uh, then you can go for this model. I mean, uh, this is your final model uh, uh, which fits the data best. And if you see that, say for example, this one, this one is accepted. For example, H, H not, uh, which is alpha one equal to zero. That means uh, this indicates that if this hypothesis is accepted, that means uh, you can go for uh, two uh, parallel line. You can fit two parallel uh, straight line for two sets of data, but with different intercept. Okay, that means uh, in that case, if this is accepted, you can go for the model y equal to say beta naught plus beta 1 x plus alpha naught z 1 plus epsilon. So, this is the model uh, uh, you can fit for the given set of data. Okay, so, this is about uh, two sets of data. two sets of data and uh, straight line model. Okay. Now, we will go for uh, three sets of data. And, uh, straight line models. Okay. <coughs> so, 
So, to allow the fitting of three separate straight lines, we form the model y equal to x naught beta naught plus beta 1 x plus z 1 gamma naught plus gamma 1 x plus z 2 delta naught plus delta 1 x plus epsilon. So, this is the model uh, for three sets of data and we are trying to fit a uh, straight line model for each set and here of course, x naught is equal to 1 is a dummy variable uh, and z 1 and z 2 are two additional dummy variables six so, naught z 1 z 2 1 1 1 1 0 0 1 and 0 0. This is for the first set, this is for set A, this is for set B and this is for set C. Okay. And this can be uh, rewritten as y equal to uh, beta naught plus beta 1 x plus gamma naught z 1 plus gamma 1 x z 1 plus delta naught z 2 plus delta 1 x z 2 plus epsilon. Okay, so, note that here uh, note that here we have uh, two interaction terms involving dummy variable uh, two interaction terms. So, uh, x z 1 and x z 2. So, this is the uh, general model which sort of cover all possible uh, uh, possibilities uh, of fitting uh, three uh, straight line for three sets of data. Now, uh, we can test uh, some hypothesis like uh, since we are given three sets of data whether we can go for uh, three parallel line uh, for uh, three sets or whether we can fit a uh, fit one single straight line model for all the three sets okay so those i mean you can you can you can uh, form the appropriate testing uh, null hypothesis to test uh, all these things. So, we will talk about two uh, testing here. So, first one is to test whether three lines are 
identical, we test the following hypothesis. Uh, okay, I uh, I need to uh, write down the model maybe once more. So to test uh, whether three lines are identical, that means we have to test whether uh, gamma naught is equal to gamma one is equal to delta naught is equal to delta one. Okay, so let me write down the model once more. So y equal to uh, beta naught plus beta one x plus uh, z one gamma naught plus gamma one x plus z two uh, delta naught plus delta one x plus epsilon. So, this is the model. Now, we want to test whether we can go for a uh, single state line model, whether the three lines are identical. To test this hypothesis, we need to test this one that uh, gamma naught is equal to gamma 1 is equal to delta naught is equal to delta 1 is equal to 0 against the alternative hypothesis that H naught is not true. Okay. Uh, I hope that you know you know how to test uh, this sort of hypothesis uh, for a model like this, because this one is nothing but a multiple linear regression model. right? So, you have uh, sort of three regressors. Uh, you can consider this dummy variable also uh, as as a regressor variable. Of course, it involves uh, some interaction term that does not matter. So, you, I hope that you can uh, recall the extra sum of square technique. So that to test this uh, hypothesis, we use the test statistic. F, which is equal to the SS regression for the full model you know uh, what I mean by this you compute the SS regression for the full model this is the full model minus S S regression for the restricted model. So, what is the restricted model here? The model under the null hypothesis. Okay. So, the restricted model is y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x. So, uh, that is that is what uh, the null hypothesis suggests that you go for this model. That means, the null hypothesis suggests that you go for uh, a single straight line fit for three sets of data. Okay. So, you compute the SS regression for the restricted model and you divide this quantity. So, this one has a degree of freedom uh, this was has degree of freedom, uh, this is the full model. So, it has degree of freedom 6 and this one has degree of freedom 2. So, uh, 6 minus 2 it is uh, you divide this quantity by 4 and this by S S residual by residual degree of freedom that is uh, n minus 6. So, this follows a distribution with a degree of freedom 4 n minus 6 and then the critical region of course, critical region is uh, you reject this null hypothesis if this f value is uh, greater than f 4 n minus 6 at some level of significance 
alpha. So, what is this uh, numerator is basically it is uh, it is basically the contribution of these parameters or uh, the associated uh, uh, regressor variable to explain the variability in uh, in y. Okay. Uh, similarly, you can test uh, say to test whether the three lines are parallel. That means, whether you can uh, fit three parallel line for three sets of data to test this hypothesis, you uh, you what you have to test? You test the null hypothesis H naught. Uh, that uh, gamma 1 is equal to delta 1 is equal to 0 against the alternative hypothesis that H naught is not true. Okay? And this one also you know the same technique uh, you can you can test this uh, uh, null hypo this hypothesis by using the f statistic f equal to uh, s s regression for the full model minus s s regression for the restricted model. What is the restricted model? That is the model under the null hypothesis. Okay. So, here the restricted model is basically you just put uh, lambda is lambda 1 equal to 0 and delta 1 equal to 0 in this equation. So, that the restricted model is y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus lambda naught z 1 plus delta naught z 2 plus epsilon. So, this is the restricted model. So, you uh, see uh, what is the SS regression under this restricted model and uh, this has of course, degree of freedom 6 and this has degree of freedom 1 2 1 2 3 4. So, uh, you divide this by 2 okay, 6 minus 4 by uh, SS residual by degree of freedom n minus 6. So, this follows f 2 n minus 6 and of course, uh, uh, the critical region is you you reject the null hypothesis if f is greater than f alpha 2 n minus 6. Okay. Now, what I will do is that, uh, so uh, I talked about, uh, now I am at this moment I am talking about, uh, suppose you are given three sets of data and I am trying to fit uh, three straight line model uh, for three sets of data and, uh, and we have we just now we talked about, you know, whether, uh, whether we can go for a three parallel line or whether you can go for a single straight line model for all three sets of data and we learned how to uh, test uh, those possibilities. Uh, so, what I will do is that I will explain this uh, if you can recall you know we had uh, uh, data called uh, Tarki data uh, and there we had uh, three sets of data and I uh, will try to explain whatever I uh, talked just now by uh, using the Tarki data. So, here is the Tarki data we had and uh, uh, y is uh, weight in pounds, x is age in uh, weeks and uh, they are from three different uh, origin. Okay. Well, so we have three sets of data, and we are trying to fit a straight line model for uh, three sets. 
So, the model you have to consider is that is the general model is uh, this one z naught into z naught or you can call x naught also no problem. So, z naught uh, into beta naught plus beta 1 x plus z 1 into gamma naught plus gamma 1 x plus z 2 into delta naught plus delta 1 x plus epsilon. Okay. So, uh, this can be uh, rewritten uh, in this way. Now, I will just explain you know how to how to fit uh, how to estimate this regression coefficients here you have 6 regression coefficients. So, here is the uh, parameter vector beta uh, this involves all beta naught beta 1 uh, gamma naught gamma 1 delta naught delta 1 and here is the coefficient matrix. So, the first one is uh, stands for uh, say you can put here z naught also. So, this is either z naught or x naught you put and this x is for the regressor variable x here and this x is same as the x here. Now, z 1 uh, you know the dummy variable scheme for two sets. So, this is the scheme. Uh, so, z 1 is this column z 1 into x you just multiply z 1 with x and you will get uh, the column associated with z 1 x. z 2 you know this is the uh, scheme for the dummy variable uh, for, for two sets of data and once you have z 2 you can compute z 2 x. So, this is what you know I am just you know uh, explaining how to how to estimate these parameters. So, you have the uh, coefficient matrix x you know this is the parameter you have to parameter vector that you have to estimate you know what is y vector this is the y vector and I am sure that you understand that you know this x and this x is different this is the this is the matrix coefficient matrix and this is uh, this is a regressor variable. Okay. Well, so so you can write uh, this multiple linear regression model in this form: y equal to uh, x beta plus epsilon. Okay, and uh, you can see you know that you know uh, for multiple linear regression model beta hat is x prime x inverse x prime y. So, you know what is x, uh, you know the x matrix, you know y. So, you can compute beta hat and uh, these are the estimates okay, of the regression coefficients. So, this is the estimated, uh, I mean this is this is the fit basically. Now, uh, three separate straight lines for first block is this one. So, this one is obtained by uh, by setting z 1 is equal to 1 and z 2 equal to 0 in this fit. Similarly, for the second block uh, the fit for the second block is obtained by uh, by setting z 1 is equal to 0 and z 2 equal to 1. Uh, in this equation here in the fitted model here and uh, the fit for third block is obtained by setting z 1 equal to 0 and z 2 equal to 0. And this three fits it says that you know, these are exactly what one would find if one fitted each subset of data separately. So, if you go for uh, say separate fitting for uh, for for uh, separate sets, uh, then uh, then you will get exactly the this these fits. Okay. And now let me compare uh, this one. I uh, see so this is uh, this is what we uh, got before. Uh, this is without 
using the interaction term. So, this is the model we considered here before. Uh, this uh, model did not, uh, this is basically here we considered that all three uh, lines are parallel and uh, that means, uh, uh, the slope for all three feeds uh, is uh, beta 1 hat and you can see here uh, we got uh, this is the fit for the first set, this is the fit uh, for the second uh, model for the second uh, block. Now, you can compare that you know these are not uh, uh, different too much, I mean the fit we obtained here and the food fit we had before, they are not uh, uh, very different, uh, but uh, that, that means uh, what I am trying to say is that. So, we have fitted a general model and this the fit we got here are not so different from the fit uh, we had before considering that uh, considering uh, 3 parallel straight line uh, for 3 sets of data. Now, uh, what we need to do is that we need to statistically test whether uh, these 3 sets of data for, 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 for target data they really require uh, three different state line model or or three parallel state lines uh, are okay for uh, the target data that that we can do uh, statistically by testing a suitable null hypothesis right so before doing that uh, i'll just uh, write i mean here is the anova table for for the Tarki data, we had you know this is the total uh, SST uh, and the degree of freedom is uh, 12 because we had uh, uh, 13 observations and this is the SS regression and SS residual is this one and SS residual degree of freedom is 7 because you know you know that uh, here in the model we we have six parameters okay and we have six parameters and we have total uh, 13 residuals six parameters means there are six restriction on the residual so uh, so seven residuals can be uh, selected or uh, can be selected, uh, you have the freedom of selecting uh, 7 residuals and the remaining 6 residuals have to be chosen in such a way that they follow uh, uh, those uh, 6 restrictions. Okay? So, that is why the residual degree of freedom is equal to 7 and then the regression coefficient, regression degree of freedom of course, it is 5 and this is the part of variability which is explained by the model you know this is the total variability in the response variable this is the variability which is explained by this model i mean here uh, if you can recall the uh, the parameter r square uh, is very high i mean uh, most uh, of the variability is explained by this uh, model and here is the f value Okay. So, to check, now what I wanted to say is that uh, we have observed that uh, this uh, uh, three state lines are very similar to the uh, state line we obtained uh, using by considering uh, uh, three parallel line fit uh, before. Now, we need to test that uh, formally. Well, so our model is the model we are fitting here is y equal to x naught beta naught plus beta 1 x plus z 1 gamma naught plus gamma 1 x plus z 2 delta naught plus delta 1 x plus epsilon. Now, to check whether uh, First, first we check whether uh, three lines could be identical. Uh, uh, so, three uh, I mean well 
let me write it uh, to check uh, whether three lines would be identical you test uh, the hypothesis uh, that h naught uh, gamma naught equal to gamma 1 equal to delta naught equal to delta 1 equal to 0 against h 1 that h naught is not true. So, we have we have the fitted model and now we are trying to we are trying to check whether uh, we really need such a general model or we can just fit a single straight line uh, for all three sets of data. So, that we uh, will get the answer from from by testing this hypothesis. So, how do we test this hypothesis? The F statistics uh, is, uh, is uh, the S S regression regression for the full model and S S regression sorry S S regression uh, for the restricted model and uh, by the degree of freedom here it is uh, 4 and by M S residual. Okay. So, this is S S residual by uh, residual degree of freedom. So, now if you recall this uh, uh, ANOVA table here, uh, the S S regression is considered for the full model is 38.711 and of course, you have to compute the S S regression for the restricted model and the M S residual is 0 0.101 and you can check that for the restricted model. What is the restricted model? Restricted model is y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x. So, you just fit this model for the given data and you see how much of the variability is explained by this model that is what the S S regression for, for this model. You can check that that is 26.20. So, this one is 30.97 and this follows f 4 and the residual degree of freedom is 7. So, this one is greater than f 0.0147 which is equal to 7.83. So, you, you refer uh, the tabulated value for f statistics. So, that means, this is significant. Significant means uh, we cannot go for I mean H naught is H naught is rejected. Okay. So, this test suggests that for uh, for the Tarki model you fit a general uh, straight line fit and then you are testing whether uh, these three blocks of data can be uh, fitted by a single straight line and the test here uh, implies that or uh, you know uh, uh, yeah the test says that uh, you cannot go for a single straight line model you have to uh, you have to go for something else. Okay. So, uh, fitting a single model for Tarki data is rejected next what we will do is that we will test uh, whether we can go for parallel uh, lines okay, to test whether three lines are parallel. Uh, to test this, we test the null hypothesis H naught, which is uh, gamma 1 is equal to delta 1 equal to 0 against the alternative hypothesis that uh, H naught is not true. 
Okay. So, similarly we use the F statistics here and that is nothing but uh, SS regression for the full model and then SS regression for the restricted model. Right? And the full model has uh, 6 parameters and the restricted model has 4 parameters. So, 6 minus 4 is 2, you divide it by 2 and by m s residual. This follows f 2 7. Now, we know that for the full model, the s s regression is 38.711, you have to find this one you know what is the model here. Okay. Uh, so, that is 38.61, let me write at least the model. So, y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus delta naught z 1 plus sorry uh, gamma 1 gamma and delta naught, delta naught z 2. So, this is the restricted model. So, you feed this model, you find the uh, SS regression due to, due to this uh, model that is 38.6, there is uh, hardly any difference. So, this is this one by 2 by m s residual that is 0 0.101. So, this is equal to 0.5, which is less than f 0 0.0127 that is 9.55, this is the tabulated value. So, this says that the test is uh, not significant, uh, that means uh, we accept the null hypothesis. Okay? So, here uh, H naught is accepted. So, the fit uh, is the fit we talked about the fit uh, fit y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus gamma naught z 1 plus delta naught z 2 plus epsilon is satisfactory. Well, so uh, let me conclude this part. Uh, so, for the Tarki data, uh, Tarki data involves three uh, sets of uh, observations and what we did here is that first you fit a general model involving three dummy, dummy variables, uh, you fit a straight line uh, general model uh, involving three dummy variables and then you test whether these three lines can be parallel or not. Uh, so, from the test here, we, we observe that the hypothesis is accepted. That means, we can go for three parallel line for the Tarki data. Okay? And based on that, uh, based on this test, finally, we conclude that this model is satisfactory for, for Tarki. Data. Okay. Well, so this uh, this is uh, uh, about uh, two sets, three sets of uh, data, uh, straight line feeds. Now we'll go for uh, two sets of data, uh, quadratic model. Okay. Suppose, uh, we have two sets of data on y and x and we are uh, 
we have in mind a model of the form y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus beta 1 1 x square plus epsilon. Okay. So, so, we have two sets of data and we are thinking of fitting a quadratic model uh, for this one. Uh, um, I, I, we did not talk about this sort of uh, quadratic model before, these are called polynomial uh, fitting, but uh, let me just say that it is not difficult because you just consider uh, x square as say you call it z equal to x square, then this is nothing but a uh, multiple linear regression model. Okay? That is all for, for, for the time being, but we will be talking about uh, polynomial regression later on. Uh, so, here we have two sets of data and we are planning to fit a uh, quadratic model. So, we fit the model involving two dummy variables that is y equal to say let me call it z naught beta naught plus beta 1 x plus beta 1 1 x square plus z 1 alpha naught plus alpha 1 x plus alpha 1 1 x square plus epsilon. So, this is the uh, same tech technique we, we used for uh, linear fitting also straight line fit. Instead of straight line, we are, we are uh, replacing this by a quadratic fit here. Okay? So, here the dummy variable scheme is uh, uh, z naught z 1, this is always 1 and this is 0 for A and 1 for for B. Okay. Now, uh, what we want is that we want to test uh, several possibilities like uh, whether you, we need two different uh, quadratic model for two sets, sets of data or, or, or we can go for a identical quadratic fit for uh, both uh, uh, sets or something else. Uh, so, we will be talking about two, three possibilities and we will talk how to test them. Uh, now, we test several possibilities. First of all, let me uh, test, let me write down the model once more, y equal to z naught beta naught plus beta 1 x plus beta 1 1 x square plus z 1 alpha 1 plus sorry alpha naught plus alpha 1 x plus alpha 1 1 x square plus epsilon. So, this is the model. Now, to test uh, whether we can go for the same quadratic fit for both the data or not, we will test this hypothesis H naught is uh, say alpha naught equal to alpha 1 equal to alpha 1 1 equal to 0 against H 1 that uh, H naught is not true. So, you, you know how to test this hypothesis by uh, using extra sum of square technique. Uh, so, of course, you understood uh, by this uh, null hypothesis that uh, if the null hypothesis is accepted, that means we can go for single quadratic uh, fit. 
Okay. So, so if H naught is rejected, then we conclude that the models are not are not the same for two sets of data. Okay? So, this is one, two. So, if H naught in one is uh, rejected, that means we cannot go for uh, the same quadratic fit for both sets. Now, we will check several other possibilities. If this is rejected, then you test this hypothesis H naught that is alpha 1 equal to alpha 1 1 equal to 0 against the h 1 that h naught is not true. What does it mean is that? Well, the two uh, quadratic models are different, but they have different intercept, but uh, the null hypothesis says that they have uh, the same slope and curvature. Okay? So, it says that if H naught is accepted here, then we conclude that the two sets of data have the same slope and curvature. Okay. So, this is how you know you can test uh, many if, uh, uh, hypothesis and many cases. Let me uh, do one more. Is that if H naught in two is is rejected, then you can now go for you test uh, whether alpha one one equal to zero against H one that alpha 1 1 is not equal to 0. That means, the null hypothesis is that okay, their slope and curvature are not the same. Now, test whether the curvature is same for both the uh, fits or not. So, this says that the, the null hypothesis said that the model uh, differs, the models differ only in uh, 0 and uh, first order term. Okay? That means, the curvature is same, uh, but they have different intercept and different uh, slope. Yeah. So, uh, that is what uh, you know you can test uh, several hypotheses uh, once you have a model. So, let me uh, conclude uh, this uh, uh, module uh, dummy variable. So, uh, here uh, uh, the, the dummy variable in, in regression analysis is used to uh, incorporate uh, qualitative information uh, in the data. Okay. Uh, here, uh, we, we understood that if you have say uh, uh, three blocks, then you need three dummy variable to, uh, to fit a general model. So, what uh, is recommended is that you know 
if you have three sets of or any and say three sets of data you you should not go for a single straight line fit for uh, for all the blocks together you fit a general model involving uh, dummy variables and then you go for several testing like whether you can go for a identical uh, straight line fit for all the data uh, or you, you can go for uh, parallel uh, straight line fits for uh, for for uh, different blocks like that and depending on the result of your uh, hypothesis testing uh, you choose the final model okay so i hope you understood the use of dummy variable uh, in in regression analysis they they are used to incorporate uh, such qualitative information uh, op, uh, available with the observation and uh, that's all for today uh, thank you very much